In a previous video, I compared my chugger pump with this Blickman Riptide. Both great pumps. The Blickman Riptide has some clear advantages over the chugger. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can look at the other video and really get a good look at, at how the hot pumping condition test uh, did, which really kind of exposed a lot of the differences between these uh, two pumps. Again, both highly capable, but I really like my Riptide. So what do you do if you have a spare March or chugger pump? Well, let's get rid of this and take a look. I can turn this chugger pump into a Blickman Riptide with the Riptide upgrade kit for March and chugger pumps. <laughs> I'm not advertising for Blickman. I got this as a gift, uh, but I do have a spare chugger and uh, I'd like to go over the uh, uh, just how quick and easy it is to convert this to something that's functionally equivalent to a Blickman Riptide. Uh, so let's take a look at what's inside the box. Right, truth be told, I did read through this already, just to expedite things a bit. Uh, so the instructions will be here. Um, I've already verified all the parts are present. There's the impeller, the cup. There's the adapter. There's the base. Oh, and check this out. That's stainless. That's a magnet. Stainless steel. Nice touch. There's our triclover clamp. There's our pump head with the silicone O-ring. And we should have a stainless washer. It goes in there. Yes, good. Okay. Um, this already has the um, the valve built into it right here, uh, and the the priming valve as well. So this is a uh, this is a variable. Uh, it's basically like a needle valve to control flow, and that's integrated into the head. And you also have this um, um, kind of like a Cornelius PRV style uh, vent valve that allows you to prime the pump very easily. Really cool feature if you've dealt with March and chugger pumps in the past, you know that that's one of the things that's kind of fun with these. <laughs> I'm being facetious. It's not that fun. You have to prime these. You can't run them dry. So with a simple inclusion of that, you can prime this pump really fast. And that has made a big difference on my brew days. Let's put that aside. Screw for March. I don't have a March. I have a chugger. There we go. Screws for chugger pump. And we have some assorted other hardware here. So let's put this stuff aside. Get to that in a minute. Get our hardware out. Okay, so we have one of our nuts and bolts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's our four rubber feet. There's our, should be eight washers. Beautiful. Okay. All right, so watch how easy this is. Rubber feet. Twist them in. There's two. There's three. There's four. Okay, let's mount the pump. Good. Prep for this. I'm just going to put the first washer on every one of these. One washer on top, one on the bottom. So you can see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm going to put one of these through the through the pump. The other one is affixed here. I'm turning this up on its side so that you can see what I'm doing. Comes through the bottom like so. Put another washer on. Put the nut on. Thank you. 
Okay, just going finger tight. And repeat for the other three. Okay. Pump is mounted. Let's take off the head. Four screws. Four. There we go. And there comes the old chugger pump head. collar on. This is the adapter that allows you to use the TC clamp. And we need the screws for the chugger pump right here. the old chugger motor and magnet assembly but we now have the adapter on there and now drop the cup and this down here now this is interesting because the impeller this is a curved impeller there's five curved blades on this the the original March and chugger pumps have a paddle wheel design with six flat ones. I think this curved impeller design that Blickman came up with is what gives this thing a little extra boost in the uh, head capacity um, and uh, improves its performance over the uh, chugger and the March pumps. Okay, so once that's dropped in there, we're just gonna make sure you have your, make sure you have your washer in there, make sure the gasket is in place. Slide it on, put our TC clamp on, and where do we want to go? How about like that? Sure. Now, once it's on there, you can reposition it however you want, uh, but uh, just for giggles, we'll uh, put it like this. That's the beauty of this. You can adjust this to any angle you want. It's infinitely variable. You can change it to whatever angle suits you. And then once you like where it's at, pin it down and voila, you have a something that's functionally equivalent to a Blickman Riptide. Now there are some differences. It doesn't have, uh, well one, you have the vented motor because this is based on the chugger motor. Uh, so you don't have the splash proof motor, but you do have the advantage of all of the cool stuff that's going on from here over on the Blickman Riptide. So from here over, it's a Blickman Riptide. Uh, it's also a chugger with a better base. Now there's no switch. It's not splash proof like the, uh, uh, like the original Riptide. But if you have an old March or a chugger kicking around and you want to convert it, uh, that's how easy it is right there. Um, I want to say this kit ran me around $120, $130 US. Uh, somebody was nice enough to give me a gift certificate for Christmas that went a long way towards purchasing this kit. And um, so I'm going to convert, I, well, I just converted this to my spare. So um, now I have a spare Blickman Riptide that I can use for just a utility pump. Welcome back to Half Moon Tech Labs. We're back down in the brew lab. We just finished converting this chugger pump to a Blickman Riptide using this kit. That went very well. Now what I'd like to do is take this converted pump and put it back in the test stand like we have here and we're going to run it through the same set of tests that we did with the original chugger and the original Riptide and we're going to match them all up and see how it actually does after it's converted. Um, so let's real quick we'll jump to a clip where I show you how the testing actually takes place and then we'll come back and we'll actually test this pump and then we'll be able to compare it with the original results from the first video. So we have a heating controller, 
driving a 5500 watt ripple inside this uh, kennel. Uh, the pump will be circulating in this and when it gets up to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C, we will stop. Uh, I will throw the isolation valve here. I'm going to take this fitting off. I'm going to move it over here. It's suspended just above but not touching this bucket. This bucket is sitting on top of a scale. The scale is set to the kilogram setting right now. Uh, and that way we can very quickly ascertain when we get to say 25 uh, liters. What I'm going to do is, is uh, once we begin pumping, I will start the pump and the timer at the same time. And we'll see how long it takes to transfer 25 liters of hot liquid through this circuit that we've built into this bucket. And we'll measure that by watching the scale. When it hits 25 kilograms, we know we've got 25 liters. Uh, so for our purposes, it's going to be good for a way of, of, of actually measuring the flow rate. I also have another valve that I can throw uh, and watch this gauge when I do that. And this will give me an indication of the head pressure that's developed by this pump when it's dead ended. All right, so that's how the testing works. So real quick, let's get this thing up to temperature. Get the pump up to 150 degrees, 65C, uh, and then we're going to commence the testing. And so real quick, we're going to cut to that, and you'll see uh, I'm just going to run three tests just like I did before. We're going to check the flow rate, uh, and we're going to check the head pressure, and then we're going to stack it up against the original chugger data and the original Blickman Riptide data and see how this thing fares. Okay, we're back to 150 degrees, or 65C. The converted... Riptide is here, and we're going to start doing our testing. Let the testing commence. All right, let's go roll up the numbers and see how we did. And we're back. I've punched the numbers from this last set of tests into the spreadsheet. Let's take a look at that now. Um, get my noggin out of the way. There we go. Okay, so uh, briefly in the previous video, which if you haven't watched that, please go back and watch the other video. It does a good job of explaining the difference uh, between the chugger and the riptide when compared head to head in hot liquid testing. Uh, those results are here. Uh, in a nutshell, the, uh, the Riptide outperformed the chugger by about six and a quarter percent, a little more than that um, for flow under these hot liquid testing conditions with about 20.4 percent better head conditions under this set of test conditions. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've, we've taken this, uh, this exact chugger pump that we ran in the original video and I've converted it using the Blickman Riptide conversion kit. I've converted it to the, its uh, Riptide equivalent. 
and then we reran the identical test with the exact same stand back to back against these other ones. Uh, same exact protocol. And here's what we came out, came out with. There was actually, there was a few surprises. Um, a bunch of questions. I may have a partial answer for one thing, uh, but uh, throw your questions in the comments if, if you'd like to see this done another way as well, because uh, uh, I have questions. I'd like to go down the rabbit hole on this a little further. I, I have some speculation as to why the difference, but let's, uh, let's plow into it. Uh, real quick, um, again, three sets of tests. Um, we ran 25 liters of water into a vessel. We took the time it took to do that, and from that we were able to derive the flow rate in both liters per minute and raw gallons per minute, U.S. gallons. And you can see that um, for the converted chugger, which is now in the riptide, it has the riptide head on the chugger um, motor, uh, this configuration had 12.28 uh, liters per minute or just about three and a quarter gallons is 3.24 US gallons per per minute uh, and that came up less than both the original chugger configuration surprisingly enough I thought it would come out to be equal to or more than this and maybe equal to or less than this that was my assumption fair assumption I thought uh, but uh, in fact uh, this is why we do testing and why you do repeats um, sometimes you're surprised by the data, and in this case, you can see that the uh, the new configuration underperforms both the chugger and the riptide. That was the surprise in both flow to this tune right here. So we're 13.4% less flow than the original chugger before we put the riptide conversion kit on it, and um, and we're down um, about 18% versus the uh, riptide, about 18.5%. And on head, same idea. Uh, the head performance uh, suffered slightly. It went down 6.6% uh, versus the original chugger. And uh, went down over 22% versus the, um, the Riptide. Now, granted, the, in the original one, there was um, a 20.4% difference between the chugger uh, between the chugger and the riptide. Uh, so this wasn't a surprise to see a, a difference here as well. But, uh, but again, uh, underperforming both of the previous tests um, for both those pump configurations, the original chugger and the original off-the-shelf riptide. So why? Uh, <laughs> good question. Um, all right, one thing, so there, there are many possibilities. One thing that jumps out at me right off the bat, and I had this uh, question, but I didn't bother to stick it in the, in the other video because uh, I don't have a tachometer. Um, I first thought was, you know, hey, did I ever check the RPM of the chugger motor versus the riptide motor? Uh, so uh, now it really came to be a question when I'm looking at the converted um, uh, chugger in its new, whatever you want to call it, the chug tide uh, type configuration here. Um, so sort of the Franken pump where I've got the uh, riptide head from the kit mounted against the uh, chugger pump um, motor. And um, is there a difference in the RPM on the chugger motor? And uh, so I don't have a tachometer, but I'm decent with electronics. So I grabbed a photo transistor, a couple of resistors, and an LED, and a 9-volt battery. And I biased the transistor. And made, long story short, I made a little sensor. I made a sensor that I could then plug into my oscilloscope. And uh, so that's what you see over here. Um, I took the, um, uh, I basically, um, let's grab a, grab a thing here you can see that so here's the chugger motor with the pump head removed and you see that that stripe of reflective tape on the inside there see that I put a I put a reflective target inside the magnet the rotating magnet assembly that's attached to the motor and so that gave me a target to point my photo transistor at so this is my makeshift tachometer very accurate actually because what I did then was uh, uh, turn on the LED and watch the, um, the output of the phototransistor on an oscilloscope and I was able to time the rotations. From that I was able to derive, uh, you take one, you divide it by the number of milliseconds and then you multiply the result times 60 and you come up with the uh, RPM. So 3,371 RPM right on the money for the unloaded uh, chugger, just as you see here, just the chugger motor. So the unloaded motor without anything attached to it, spun at 3371. Uh, repeat the same exact test, put a little test target on the uh, on the motor for the Riptide, and it came out 200 RPM higher 
so the unloaded motor speed on the Riptide is a couple hundred RPM higher than the than the um, chugger motor. And there are many reasons why that I'm not going to go into induction motor theory and, and motor slip and all this other stuff. There's all kinds of reasons why motors would perform, uh, you know, that are fed with the same voltage and the same frequency could perform slightly different in, in RPM. Uh, that's pretty normal. Um, however, that would explain there's about a 5.6% difference in speed. Okay. So that could go partway towards explaining what we're seeing over here, but not entirely. So what else are we looking at? Um, there is the possibility that there is magnetic slippage occurring in the loosely coupled. Um, it, they're, they're close coupled, but not touching the, this spinning magnetic ring that the motor is using to drive the impeller. The impeller has, has a, um, has a magnetic assembly in it as well that mates up inside here. It doesn't physically touch it. They're just magnetically ganged. It looks like it's like an eight pole arrangement or something in there that locks in with the, um, um, with this circular, it looks like a ceramic, um, uh, magnet assembly inside the motor. Anyway, these things are closely coupled, but not physically coupled. And that's how these magnetic, uh, driven impeller motors work. Um, the motor spins, uh, they're magnetically locked to the rotor that's close to but not touching it. And so when one spins, the other one spins in lockstep with it, in theory. Um, what happens when that pump is running under duress? Uh, is there any slippage? You wouldn't really know because um, the way it's designed, it's meant to be set up so that if the motor has difficulty or it gets seized up or um, you, you hit it with a load that's too high, it can just sort of slip around. Uh, the motor will just continue to slip around and the rotor will just keep up as best it can. So is there magnetic slippage occurring? Is there a difference in the strength of this magnetic ring assembly on this motor versus the Riptide? I suspect there might be. Um, when I took out my uh, trusty uh, uh, calipers here, uh, I looked at the... Um, at the impellers, that's another possible difference. There are there's a brown and a black impeller, um, and there's a lot of chatter online as to what's the difference between these. And I believe it's just the material. I think that the original impellers were black, if I'm not mistaken, and then the subsequent ones that came out were uh, brown. And I think the later version has um, uh, carbon fiber in it. Um, but anyway, the uh, Blickman speaks to the fact that they changed their material a little bit on their second generation impeller. Uh, mechanically, though, it appears to be identical in every aspect. Dim dimensionally, uh, the curve on the impellers, the number of vanes on the impeller, uh, how thick it is. I mean, I, I, I went all, I dimensioned the whole thing. The only thing I saw was like where the, the very end of the, of the um, impeller assembly, where it mates up against the thrust washer, um, there was a very, very tiny difference in geometry on the end, but not in a place that matters as far as the pump is concerned. Dimensionally, there's really not much of a difference between the two impellers. I think it's just a material difference. So, but what's going on inside the magnet inside the impeller assembly, I don't know. Is that a stronger magnet that engages uh, in a better way with the Blickman um magnet assembly on their motor because you know i don't have a quick way to to uh to check the magnetic uh, field strength or the pole arrangement on that uh, i have some ideas on how to do that but i'm not going to drag it into this video i'll just say that the difference can be um it can be a combination of factors it could be this slight difference in uh, motor speed uh, although you know again we're, we're comparing the riptide against it or this riptide kit against the original chugger. So same motor, different results. So you could say you could almost discount the RPM, but there's the possible, there's the possibility that the magnetic interaction between the, uh, in that coupling could be a little different. Um, I don't see any obvious dimensional changes um, other than the, um, the original off the shelf Blickman Riptide motor appears to have a beefier uh, magnetic ring assembly on the motor. I did notice that there is a difference between that and the uh, so so is it magnetic slippage? Is it just the fact that one motor is torquier than the other under certain conditions? Uh, I noticed on the chugger, there's no indication that there's a capacitor inside this motor at all. Um, 
although it states that it turns at 3,500 RPM, we know it really spins at 3,371. There's always going to be a little give and take there. Um, but um, uh, I, I don't know what the Blickman Riptide is supposed to be rated for speed-wise, but it was actually it actually came out to um, 3,571, which in theory it's going to be 3,600 RPM or less. Uh, for an induction motor um, uh, of this number of poles. So anyway, uh, jury's out as to why why the difference uh, now. But the big question is, does it really make a difference? Again, at the end of the day, if you had a march or a chugger pump kicking around that had a bad impeller on it or the head's wasted or, you know, the shaft is spun out and you're just sick of it and it's grinding and making noises and it's time to either fix your chugger or your march pump or upgrade, um, that's up to you whether you go out and buy a brand new pump or not. But if you're of the type that wants to keep what you have running as long as you can, uh, then you might make a case for saying, you know what, if I'm going to go spend money on parts to, to resurrect my chugger or my march pump, why don't I buy a, 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 a Blickman um, Riptide upgrade kit instead? Because then, although you know your mileage may vary, I noticed on the Blickman site, they put no specifications on. So they have specs on their rip, Riptide pump and, and their other pump uh, or pumps, but they have no specifications on the conversion kit. And I don't blame them. And the reason for that is they don't know what motor you're using. They don't know if you're in the EU or in the US. The difference is 50 and 60 hertz. That makes a big difference for induction motor speed and torque and head performance and flow performance. So um, there's many different variables that could affect how your uh, final kit comes out based on the parts that you're supplying. Blickman doesn't know what you're using. Um, so I don't blame them. I wouldn't put specifications on it either. So what do you get? You get a pump that performs within half a gallon a minute of its original chugger, in my case. Is that a big difference? On brew day? No, because I usually throttle my pump to some extent anyway. Um, unless I'm whirlpooling, then I'm, I'm going all out. But um, would, I, um, would I still do this? Absolutely. Am I going to keep my chugger in its new Riptide configuration that I've, that I've done with the kit? Yes, I am. And why? Again, just like in the previous video, it comes down to uh, when it comes to the chugger versus the Riptide uh, for features, um, so for flow and head performance, yeah, there's some differences. Are they stark? No. Um, you know, the Riptide definitely edges out the others, uh, but it's the other things you get, the other physical differences with a pump. You have a bleed valve to prime the pump. That's huge. Uh, you have a TC uh, clamp that holds the pump assembly to the, the motor assembly. You spin that off with, with a couple fingers, no tools. You're inside the pump. It works great. Uh, it also allows you uh, infinite variability on the angle that you set the head for because you can just loosen up the TC clamp, spin the head to wherever you want that angle to be, tighten it down, you're good to go. Um, so ease of, of breakdown and cleaning, uh, the inclusion of, the, of that uh, vent valve, uh, of course the flow control, their linear flow control, uh, basically like a big needle valve on there to control flow. Uh, that's a huge thing. So those are, and you know, all stainless head that breaks down in seconds. Um, again, I think the kit is a winner. I'm keeping my chugger in its new configuration, even though the, um, um, the performance went down a notch. Uh, there is a difference. It is measurable, uh, on brew day. I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. And I think that the payoff, uh, in using the kit, uh, to convert your old chugger or March is the fact that you gain all of the other Blickman Riptide features. So you basically have a Riptide head on your old pump and that's better than tossing your old pump. So, uh, I like it. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please throw them in there um, because uh, I'd like to go further down the rabbit hole on this too when I get some time. Uh, for now, though, I'll say that uh, that's the difference between these pumps, uh, and that's how this kit uh, that's how the the test shook out here, uh, as far as the final analysis goes. I still think it's worth it. Uh, I think the degradation in performance is minor uh, as compared to the uh, the uptick in features you get when you move to uh, something that has the Blickman head on it. Well, that's it from Half Moon Tech Labs. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. If you have comments, go ahead and leave them below. And, uh, and if I get enough uh, suggestions on another way to do this and I get some time, I may do another video on this. So uh, 
<laughs> anyway, um, hope it was informative. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you later.